Hey YouTube, today I'm going to discuss going no contact with your narcissistic friend. I'm just going to jump right into no contact because narcissistic friends, they know what they're doing to you. They're playing mind games with you. They're trying to control you. These people, they don't love you. They don't care about you. It's all about them the purpose you serve for them. If they can exploit you, if they can use you, that's what they want to do. So if this is the video you came to to learn tips on how to deal with them, no, you won't get it here. But what you will get is my story on how I went no contact and I have been no contact with this narcissistic friend for about two and a half to three years because for me, when you begin to see that these people have no good intentions and really are trying to destroy you once they decide, you know, that you can't be controlled, they want to destroy your character, you know, they would actually, it's sort of like a murderer, but they're not pulling a trigger on you. But they, I, I really feel that they wouldn't mind if you end up in a mental institution because you had a nervous breakdown because of the things they've done to you. That's just how calculating that and, uh, and how much of a menace these people are to society. So it's no coexisting. It is how to go no contact. And this is my story. So uh, in the if you haven't watched my video about narcissistic friends, I really suggest you watch that first. I talked about a person who likes to go by a name of Princess. I, one, the reason I decided to go no contact with her, I used to live with the individual. And once I moved out, we didn't talk for about six months because I had just had it up to here, up to there. You, it was just, ooh. I was just done with her because she just continued to poke, poke at me constantly. Oh, I just don't understand why you aren't licensed, you know, she would tell me. But this individual couldn't hold down a job. And she said even for the last, what, 10, 15 years, she was going from job to job every few months getting fired. And according to her, she didn't know why she kept getting fired, you know, just total lack of self-awareness. But she knew what was best for my career. She knew what was best for my, um, what kind of car I should drive. Or if I mentioned student loans, you know, she would say, oh, you shouldn't pay those. But the thing is, of it is is that friends will have suggestions but what makes it wrong and narcissistic is when these friends continue to bring up something and get mad at you if you don't do it like i mentioned oh this loan yeah i have to make a payment didn't in the narcissistic princess would say didn't i tell you already that you shouldn't pay that are you still even entertaining that i already told you don't pay it you know things like that so i just got really sick of this poking person poking or making comments about my hair saying things like, oh, you know, um, I just really think a perm or a weave would be better for your hair because your hair, it looks unkempt, you know, and you should do this with your hair. And I told the person, you know, this is my hair. I'm going to wear my hair like I want, but thank you and moved on. But it just continued to be a subject like, oh, and then maybe a few weeks later, oh, I just don't know why you won't perm your hair. A few weeks after that, oh, I just don't know why you won't um, put some weave in your hair. And I say, look, back off. And the narcissist, and then she would always be like, oh, you seem so touchy, you know, this, uh, you know, just playing mind games. Oh, you seem so touchy. This seems like a sensitive subject. She knew it was touchy. She knew it was sensitive because I had asked her to back off. I didn't care about what she thought. And, you know, she would say, well, it seems since you're responding this way that you must think there's some truth to what I'm saying. See, that's that mind game I'm telling you. I was, I was over, um, I was, I won't say I was overreacting, but I would get upset and I would speak my mind to her about how I felt because I'm thinking if you're a friend, why would you continue to bring up such a conversation? And I told you to back off, you know, you're not, she had no respect of boundaries, but you know, and she would try to flip it on me or the gaslighting, making me think that my reality, that something was wrong with the way I saw things. But of course there was nothing wrong with her because then she would make the, make the lie like well like she was just only trying to help me she wanted to look out for my best interest those are the lies that the narcissist tell so after I finally decided look I wanted to save up more money but after staying with her for a few months I could not do it so I left six months we didn't talk she ended up calling me and at the time I used to celebrate um 
holidays. And so she called me and invited me for Thanksgiving. So I went over and then, you know, she told me, oh, I was upset with you. And I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. But after that, she would stop making comments about my hair. But I noticed she would still make comments about the student loan or um, my car. You know, she would still do that because I guess she figured if she said something else about my hair, I definitely wouldn't entertain her. And so for a while, I, you know, I would just um, defend myself. Oh, well, I'm keeping this car because this, 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 you know, explaining to her when really it was none of her business. Or she would tell me, oh, I just don't know what you spend your money on, you know. And I told her, it's none of your business what I spend my money on. Just a very controlling individual. So after after this time went on, you know, uh, the final straw for me was at her birthday party. You know, we got, we got there and... Um, Everyone was just sitting down and on their phones and really not engaging. And so I was at the opposite end of the table with her. And so, like I said, everyone on my end, um, even if they knew each other, they were on their phone. I didn't know them, but, you know, everyone was doing their own thing. She comes over and says, oh, this is, and she used to call me her cousin. She's like, oh, this is my cousin, Samira. Forgive her. She's antisocial, you know, just, um, bringing you know that negative attention you know when everyone else is doing the same thing but I was her target but so if I she would have loved for me to to react um and say oh well what do you mean and blah 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 blah. and then the people there not knowing our history that she's constantly poking would assume that I was the crazy person so I didn't react I just noted it mm, okay even at our party she can't be happy you know, so, you know, that was it. But so a after that, I noticed um, I did contact her to get some, um, some pans and things that I had left at her house. And she didn't call me back in the holidays past. I didn't, I had reached out to her, nothing. So I, I had decided, you know what? She actually sucks. I really don't want to be around her. So good riddance. She never has to call back. As soon as I said that in my head, she ends up uh, calling. And so I was ignoring her. And so then she had a fake, some other number that she called me from and I picked up. And she's like, um, I'm a princess. I'm a princess. What are you doing? What are you doing? You have to talk to me. L really, this is what she was doing. I'm a princess. I'm a princess. This is princess. You got to talk to me. I'm a princess. And so I said, oh, can't talk now. She's like, but, 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 but uh, I'm a princess. L literally. And so I hung up. Maybe a few days later, I'm leaving out my house. And um, at the time where I stayed, it was a gate and you couldn't call from the gate. You could only, um, you had to call the person by their their home phone. I mean, not the home phone, but their cell phone. And I had blocked her number. So I come outside and she's there with some guy in the car. Now, I don't know how long she was just sitting outside my house, just spooky, you know, and I end up coming out. These people are I don't know what it is, like these energy vampires, they can like sense your movement, some of them. So she um, tr had a bag, a Christmas bag and trying to give it to me. And I said, no, nope, no, thank you. And I just kept smiling and walking in my car. And she kept trying to talk. I just said, no, nope, no, thank you. Can't accept your gift. No, nope, no, thank you. I get in my car, unlock it. She hurries up and unlocks the um, back door, um, oh, trying to open the back door. So I hurried up and locked it so she couldn't give me her gift. So then I'm trying to pull off and she won't let me pull off because she's blocking on the side of my car and doing jumping jacks. Hey, hey, hey. You know, so I couldn't move and I'm not going to lie. Even though I was mad at her and no contact, I started laughing because I'm just thinking of all the theatrics that she's doing because she's trying to show me how good she is so she could will um, get me to come back in so she could start the abuse all over. And so I decided I wasn't going to take it because one thing with a narcissist, you discard them or you're standing up for yourself. If you can't go back to them, they're just going to treat you even worse because they think they're better than you. You're a peon. You're their project. You're stupid. You're naive. You deserve this abuse. And now you, of all the people, have the nerve not to do what the princess says. You're going against the princess. What? So I said, oh, no. So I started pulling out and I eventually pulled out so much she had to move. But it almost cost me a, a car accident because she was in the way and I couldn't see. So I hurried up and pulled out and another car hurried up and sped, sped off and was blowing the horn. And she was, Prince was like, oh, 
because I almost got hit. So I'm like, these narcissists will try to kill you. So anyway, I drove off. After that, uh, I she left me another um, voice message from another phone telling me, oh, it was so good to see you the other day. The other day where I almost got um, hit by a car. Uh, oh, it was so good to see you the other day. And you said that we should sit down and talk and meet up. So just call me back so I'll know when you want to meet. So this is another thing about the gaslighting, trying to make me question my reality. I, I said nothing of the sort to her about meeting up. So she thinks that I'm that crazy that I'm going to believe that that's what I said. Because in her mind, she feels that she has so much control over me that I was going to fall for that hypnosis. Yes, Samira, do as I say. But no, I didn't call her back. So what I did notice that when, when um, to successfully go no contact, I blocked her on all social media. I made sure I deleted her phone number and any other phone number she called me from. So because of that, I never heard from her again. And when you go no contact, it's, to me, it's best to stay no contact because sometimes if people are married, they have kids, they can't successfully do it. You're gonna, they're going to have to engage with the narcissist. And then that's when I feel that you develop tactics on how to deal with the narcissist how to stay calm and respond versus react. But a friend, if you, you don't have any kids with these people, uh, you have no ties, not saying that it's going to be easy because you may miss the person, even if they were abusive, there were some things you liked about the individual. You may miss the individual, but you have nothing uh, connecting you. Uh, with that person. If you work with the person, then possibly you may need some tips. Um, but again, I would say if the if you have a raging narcissist at work uh, who happens to be a friend and just making it hell, it, if possible, I would say to leave that job or uh, not to engage with that person if you don't have to. But I once worked in the same office, in the same office <laughs> not the whole building but the one little small office with a narcissist and I decided no thank you I was not going to live my life like that I did like that job but not that much because uh it seemed that the boss probably was a narcissist as well so uh no I I didn't want to uh, one thing about leaving narcissists, you will notice flying monkeys. Flying monkeys is just a term for people who take the narcissist side. They'll call you and then they'll say things to you like, oh, you know, the narcissist is very hurt. Why did you do that? You and the narcissist seem like very um, good friends. Then and you may tell your story and the fly to the flying monkey. And I mean, you're just pouring out your heart over explaining uh, just defending yourself and the flying monkey will say things like, well, you know, it really doesn't seem that bad. And maybe you should just forgive because God forgave or, you know, to be sp spiritually enlightened, you know, to have your chakras clean, you, you must get past this. You know, they'll say all the things, but one thing I noticed with flying monkeys, they never start saying how they went to the narcissist and called the narcissist out about their bad behavior, about being entitled and using people and these smear campaigns where they try to make you seem like the scum of the earth to other people who know you, mutual friends or your family, or they try to make, um, they tell people that you're crazy, you're unstable, you're a liar, you're a bitch and all these other things. And they try to make your life hell, get you fired or do all types of crazy things to you. If you have kids, they'll try, maybe try to poison your kids against you. These people are evil and they wish death upon you, not by a loaded gun, but by their tongue. They kill and destroy. So these are the reasons why um, I go uh, no, no contact. Like um, the princess had a sister who called me and she went on and on about how she thought we were the best of friends because we were because with the narcissist sometimes with their with their targets what they'll do is um, do their abuse in private and so around the sister it seemed like me and the narcissist were best friends because we would laugh and make up um, crazy songs and things like that and have a good time but when the sister left the narcissist would go into her ways they sometimes they like to do things in private so they could keep up that facade of being this really great special person that they want to be in front of other people. But when you're their target, you get to see 
behind behind that mask that they portray to the rest of the world and get to see them really for that that wickedness that evil that lies beneath and i say that even though it's narcissism is classified as a mental illness you, these people are totally in control of what they're doing they know what they're doing and i say that because they choose targets people that they feel that they can get away with treating like crap they do and when they feel that someone um, that they're not going to be able to get away with it, they won't do it to that person. So if they have someone that they really respect and look up to, they're not treating that person that way. So a narcissist knows when to turn it on or turn it off. They're in full control of what they're doing. So that's why I give them no pass. I have no, uh, I don't feel sorry for them. I don't care what they went through in their life because they choose to treat you like garbage. For instance, my mother is a narcissist, but even the hell that she unleashed onto me as the scapegoat, you know, um, the one that she needed to be the, the problem, you know, I decided that I was going to stay happy. I was not going to allow that to permanently get me down. And the narcissist, they can't stand that. They want you to be as unhappy as they are. So back to Princess's uh, sister. So after about an hour, and I will not, I don't ever plan to do this again to explain myself like that again. Because if someone, they don't get it, they don't get it. It's none of their business, you know? So um, after an hour of me explaining myself, she tells me, well, you know, honestly, it's not the first time that someone has came to her saying that her sister... Um, basically was a narcissist and treated them very disrespectful. And I was thinking, wow, you had me on the phone all this time talking about how you think she wants the best for me. You think she really loves me and really considers me family. But you already know that other people have come to you on different occasions and told you the same thing about your sister. So even though she's not doing it to you, she's doing it to other people and you know about this. So one thing I would say about dealing with flying monkeys, if they come to you, I wouldn't stay on the phone long. Don't, it's no need of uh, defending yourself because you don't owe an explanation to the flying monkey. If they come to you and say, oh, this person said this about you, they said this, I suggest you say, oh, well, that's interesting. And then try to get off the phone. And if they say, well, is it true? Is it true? And just say, hmm, that it sounds interesting, but you know what? It's not a conversation I want to have or I'm, you know, I'm really not interested, you know, anything else you need and then, you know, get off, get off the phone with the person, save yourself because sometimes the flying, I think the flying monkey, they know that something is wrong, but these people like to keep up gossip and they're minions of the uh, narcissist. So they just want to help further put abuse on you or to make you lose control and to um, cause to, they want to see you suffering in pain too. So they're doing the work on behalf of the narcissist. So just save yourself some time and love yourself enough to just say, hey, that's unfortunate they're saying that, hmm, you know? And some um, flying monkeys, you know, I even wonder, you know, they they won't call the narcissist out on anything, but they they feel that it's okay to come to you and tell you, you're the one who should do better. You should apologize. You should be the bigger person. You, 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 you. And I, one thing I would also say to a flying monkey, hey, have you had this conversation with the narcissist? If they say no, well, why not? You know, and then once I get the response, well, how come you thought it was okay to bring it to me? And then I would say to the person, well, you know what? You need to, you know, the narcissist, you go and um, challenge that person the way you're challenging me. And once you've success, successfully done that, then try to give me a call. So, all right, well, thank you. And Again, uh, thanks for watching. Tell Samira. If you have any questions on this topic, feel free to leave it in the uh, description box and I'll get back to you. Thank you.